Well, welcome to our uh, April 25th, 2021 Sunday School lesson. We've actually got some members here today, which we're really glad of. We hope soon there'll be a whole room full. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, though, first. Father, uh, we thank you that we have the opportunity to come to you in prayer. And I wish we could say that everything's good in this world, but the world seems to be gone crazy. Hatred and violence are pervasive all over the, the, this country in ways I never thought I'd see. So, Lord, we pray that you help us through this time. And it's not just because of this disease that's going, but it's a worse disease than that. And hopefully soon we'll be able to gather again as, as a Sunday school class and as a church. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this lesson is called Our Commission. And uh, I'm told that uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, the famous painter, would never have painted the painting called The Last Supper if he hadn't been commissioned to do so because they were renovating the church. And what a tragedy that would have been uh, to never have had that painting appear. Uh, and the thing about it, too, is that believers and followers of Christ have also been commissioned. And, to, and when they do their job and do their work, and I'm talking about us, and sadly we fall down on that many times, that, uh, that can be a very wonderful and beautiful thing, too, when we follow up on our commission and do do as we ought to do. For it changes lives and in fact saves lives when people believe. And God has entrusted this hope and this promise uh, in earthen vessels and uh, human believers that is to share, to tell, and to preach uh, the word. Will we do it? Do we do it? I wish I could say we do. You remember the uh, TV program called Mission Impossible? I believe it's still being shown. But that was a time when uh, one of the uh, team that's on the Mission Impossible team would walk into something like a uh, telephone booth or something and there would be a tape recorder in there, and he would push the button, and it would describe some situation that their team was going to have to address and, and fix. And then it would always end, this is your mission, should you decide to take it. Should you decide to take it. And then the tape, as you remember, would self-destruct. And, and go uh, up and smoke. Now, uh, that's exactly the situation facing uh, all Christians. Will we take on that commission? Will we do the job Jesus has left for us to do? A little like the mission impossible. But his mission isn't impossible because we have him behind it. And whatever he sets his hand to, it'll to be accomplished. But he would prefer that we take it up and do the job. Let's turn to Matthew and see what that commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, to, to hear exactly what that uh, commission is. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore 
and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So that's the commission Jesus laid upon all believers. To whom is Jesus speaking? To whom is he addressing? I think it's to believers. He had specific people then at the, in before him, but the message has never gone out. It's still effective to every believer. You know, so, uh, will we do the message? Will we do that job? Some do a lot, and some other others do nothing. This commission came from Jesus after he died on the cross. And he could say because he did that, he earned the right to say that all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He earned that right by dying on the cross. And he issued the command, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in my name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. No, he didn't notice he didn't set any boundaries on it. No, no specific places to go or set. Teach all nations, he said. God always has intended for his people to influence the nations. If you look way back into Genesis even, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, and I'll read that. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, uh, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So that was God's intent all along from the very beginning. The Jews, his chosen people, would carry that message. Now they didn't always do it, did they? They're just like everybody else. Christians too fail and fall down. But those here in Jesus that day were to go and to make disciples and to tell others about Christ. Teaching them, he said, to observe all things that he had commanded. And if done right, there would be an endless supply of uh, people giving their testimony on down through time. A cycle of teachers and learners and we will not be alone, he promises, when we do that in this work. Jesus promised, I am with you always until the end of the world. Now I want to jump over into Second Corinthians uh, 5, 16 through 19. And we'll read there. Wherefore, henceforth, Know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. What we should do, we should tell others what Christ has done in our life. 
We can, we can do that. We know God did something in our lives. And we ought to be able to tell others that testimony of what he's done for us. Can we do it? Ought we to do it? Yes. And at times I wonder whether, and I'm talking about myself now, that wonder if, if I'm committed enough to it. Do I do it enough? Or do I let opportunities pass by and because of weakness or whatever reason? But think about this, what he says. Henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. This means a believer no longer sees a person as he once did. We look at people, and we ought to look at people differently. See the best side of people that we can. People are not to be classified by race, toxicity, nationality, economic status, educational ability, or social status, or how much money they got, or any other kind of things you might come up with. But we do do that sometimes. Most important, though, is the thing we need to look at is what's their spiritual status? How do they stand with Jesus? Are they saved or are they lost? And if they're lost, that's an opportunity for us to reach out to them. Paul confessed that uh, that he once looked at Jesus differently. He said he had only known Christ after the flesh, like he like he was a man. He saw him as a human in a human way. First of all, he saw him as a poor carpenter raised in Nazareth. He looked at him like that. And then he became a traveling teacher, a preacher, going from place to place, giving his message. And then one who challenged religious authority. He got in the face of the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes when they confronted him. He didn't mind taking them on because they were his biggest enemies on earth. They ended up killing him because they, uh, he made them look bad on so many occasions. Uh, he, he challenged everything they thought and said. He, he one time said about the Pharisees, he said, do what they say. Do what they say. But do not do as they do. Because they don't do as they say. And they just hated Jesus. Because he, he was right. And they knew it. But they couldn't accept him. Accept him. Uh, so, uh, so much so they hated him that they finally had him executed and, of, on false charges. Now he goes on and says, Now though, we know him, speaking about Jesus, we know him no more in human form. He can no longer think of him as a human. He thinks of him as a Savior and the Messiah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. God has reconciled himself, us to himself, by Jesus Christ. He wants us to love him and accept him. Reconciled it means exchanging one thing for another. A common idea would be changing, uh, making an enemy into a friend. That'd be a very good case of it. Settling disputes with parties that are at odds with one another. That's reconciliation. And because of sin, unbelievers are God's enemies. God hates sin. And if you're a sinner, you're outside of God. Love. He wants you to believe. 
He wants you to come. But that's just the way it is. Because of sin, unbelievers are God's enemies. And to uh, reinforce that, out of Romans, I've got a scripture here to read, Romans 5.10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. But we can be reconciled to God through faith in Christ. I want to read that in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 18 through 19. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their sins, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Consider uh, these important truths about reconciliation in, in Paul's letters. God's always the one doing the reconciliation. And uh, we, the people, the humans, or the world are always the ones in need of reconciliation. And through Jesus' death, God acted to remove uh, hostility and find acceptance and forgiveness. God has said, has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to reach the lost. He's given to the believers that ability, if you'll use it, to go to people and be able to reconcile them, to speak to them, to make them see the truth, and that they need to be uh, drawn back to God, a reconciliation. And he's given us that, that ability. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, not taking into account their sins. That's something there that God will overlook your sins and your trespasses. He won't count them and hold you responsible to those. That's quite a, a gift that he's given us there. Let's jump on down to Second Corinthians uh, 5, 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As through God, they beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be uh, sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul made it clear here that all followers of Christ are to be an ambassador. If we don't know that, we, we need to learn it. But I've always thought, after you're saved, why, why doesn't God just go ahead and take you out of the world then? Because the, after you're saved, there's nothing more you can do to, to be better he's forgiven your sins and everything but why has he left us I think he's left us to do the work the, says the fields are white under harvest go out into them and save others I think that's what he wants us to do to be an ambassador for him to share the gospel message with others and uh, he extended an invitation to believe in Jesus Christ. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The praying for, God, uh, for Jesus Christ, taking his place, praying for others to reach out to them. You know, uh, God provided 
this reconciliation through Jesus Christ. But you have to do something about it. It's like the free gift. It's lying there. He made the free gift of salvation. You have to take it. Otherwise, it just stays there. You have to take that free gift. Uh, it doesn't come automatically. Christ's work on the cross was more than sufficient. But it's only effective by those who believe in it and acquire it and want to take it up. He hath made him to be sin for us. Just think about that. Jesus who knew no sin when he went on the cross he had to bear the sins of the whole world, future and past. He took out all that on. What a load that was. And he knew no sin, so it was doubly more difficult for him to do that. I think that's why he kept praying about if there's some other way, let this cup pass. But then he'd say, but not my will, but thine be done. He knew he had to do it. That's why he came. And he did it so that we may be made righteous. Or put in a right standing with God. There's another way of thinking of that. To be acceptable to God. That's only possible through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way the truth and the life. He's the only way to achieve that. I got a question for you. How do we go about being a witness of Christ to the world? Or even in a smaller way to another person? Just don't think about the whole world. Think, how do I become a witness to just one other person? Jesus gave a, a way to begin in Acts uh, 1.8. I'll read that. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You notice how Jesus started out kind of small? He said, You'll be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in that city. But after that, he said, you'll be witnesses of me in Samaria. I mean, Judea, which is just a little farther out. And then he said, and also in Samaria, which he was reaching way out. And they hated the people of Samaria. But you go there and witness anyway. Witness to everyone. So he kept widening the outreach. But you know, sometimes it's harder to be a witness in your hometown than it is to go to Africa, I think. But you don't have to leave this country to be a witness. But he kept expanding out farther and farther. Think of it like this. Think about us being witnesses. Stick out your arms, both of them like that, and think of a circle. That circle. Be a witness in that region there. In other words, who you witness to in that? Not too many people were inside you. You're in there. You gotta be witness to. You gotta talk to yourself and get re get yourself right first. Before you can be a testimony and a witness for God, you have to be right yourself. So get that right in that circle. Then widen that circle just like Jesus said. Go out to Judea a little wider. Reach out into the city. Whoever you can have, uh, reach. And, he, and keep expanding it farther and farther. And uh, keep doing that. 
And when when you convert one person, think think about this. You convert one person, and they convert another person. That, that's two for you. God counts yours and his, and, and his counts for you. That's two. And next thing you know, you got four. And eight and sixteen. And if you go two to the tenth power, that's over a thousand. Two to the twentieth, twenty people, that's a million. And it keeps rising like that. God had a good plan. It just hurts because He put it in our hands. And we don't always carry it out like we should do. I think it's an amazing plan. It reaches far into the future. And it keeps going. Like, um, like even after we die, and are gone from this earth. We've had influence with people. And your words, your life keeps on living through them. They remember, they recall things. And you're still gaining uh, converts sometimes through others. So we just have to think about that. God's plan and I think it's a wonderful plan. It just has to be carried out. Anyway, I, I thank you all for coming, first of all. And I look forward to the day we, uh, we'll have this room full. Right now we got four people in here. And, uh, we, before this all happened, we were 40 to 45. And on some days, over 50. But we've had a lot of deaths and people moving and different things that happen. And we just hope we'll grow again. And it isn't the numbers, it's the people. And we long to see and have that fellowship again. So I thank you all for listening again and keep coming back to us. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.